Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is lecture number 57 and uh, today we will be talking about the solutions of uh, homogeneous linear equations or in particular we will be talking about the complementary function that is nothing but the, sol the general solution of uh, a differential equation a homogeneous linear differential equation and we will discuss many solution techniques how to find a uh, complementary function. So, solution of this homogeneous linear equations the complementary function. So, here we will consider such a differential equation the nth order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So, these uh, coefficients here a 1 a 2 a 3 a n they are also taken as constant. So, what we have also discussed in the last lecture that we can write down this equation in terms of this operator form. So, d power n plus a 1 d n minus 1 and so on is equal to 0. And we have also observed in the last lecture that we can work with these operators uh, d as uh, as the algebraic operations we do with the polynomials. So, we can factorize indeed this and can write in this form that d 1 minus alpha 1 d minus alpha 2 d minus alpha n this is the factorization of this portion here with this operator and y is equal to this x and we have proved in the last lecture that this is exactly the same as having this uh, nth order derivatives plus a 1 n minus 1 nth order derivatives and so on. So, uh, indeed this is uh, 0 here we are talking about the homogeneous uh, equation. So, the right hand side will be taken as 0. So, treating the operator d as a number the ordinary this laws of multiplication works and this was the observation from the last lecture. So, today uh, we will now uh, get to the solution of this differential equation and for uh, example, now for simplicity we are considering the second order differential equation. Uh, second order linear homogeneous differential equation with these two coefficients a 1 and a 2 and the right hand side is 0. So, how to get the general solution how to get the complementary function of this uh, linear equation. So, first we need to write the equation in the operator form. So, here this will be d 2 a 1 here the d will come plus this a 2 and on y. So, here we have d square plus a 1 d plus a 2 and operator on y is equal to 0. So, we write the auxiliary equation out of this operator equation. So, the d square meaning here m square plus a 1 this m plus a 2 and is equal to 0. So, the case of non repeated roots first we will consider when the roots of this auxiliary equation. So, how to get this auxiliary equation this is from just from the operator equation. So, instead of working with this d which were operator it is better to replace this d by this m and now let us work with this uh, polynomial equation here m square plus a 1 m plus a 2 is equal to 0. So, first case we will uh, consider here for non repeated roots that means the roots of this auxiliary equation root of this equation here are non repeated meaning. So, we consider here suppose the alpha 1 and alpha 2 these are the two uh, roots or two uh, non repeated roots. So, they are distinct roots here alpha 1 and alpha 2 of this auxiliary equation. So, we have this second order polynomial. So, we will get these two roots here alpha 1 and alpha 2 and we assume that these roots are non repeated then what will be the solution of the given homogeneous differential equation. So, we have this equation which we can write down now because we know the, the roots here of this uh, equation alpha 1 alpha 2 meaning we can factorize we can write down this operator equation in this form also d minus alpha 1 and this multiplied by d minus alpha 2 
on this y is equal to 0 or this is the observation again from the last lecture that this order here of this product is immaterial. So, we can take this d minus alpha 2 first and then d minus alpha 1 operated on y this is equal to 0. So, we consider first this d minus alpha 1 into d minus alpha 2 y is equal to 0 uh, a solution of the above equation uh, will be a solution here. So, if we set uh, and if we find a solution here of this t minus alpha 2 y is equal to 0, then this will also satisfy the given equation because once we know that uh, this y here is giving d minus alpha 2 y is equal to 0. So, if we operate this d minus alpha 1 on 0 also we will get 0. So, that is the idea here that we look a solution now of this differential equation here d minus alpha 2 y is equal to 0 and whatever solution we get here that will be also a solution of this given differential equation. So, how to get the solution of this differential equation that is easy it is a first order differential equation we can write down in this form this is dy over dx and minus this alpha 2 y. Uh, is equal to alpha 2 y because this was minus alpha 2 y. So, we have taken the right hand side and this we can solve it is a variable separable here. So, d y and we can take y here and then d x can go to this side and then we can integrate. The solution of this d y over d x is equal to alpha 2 y is given here as y is equal to alpha 2 x. So, we have the solution of this uh, part here of the given equation, but this y is equal to E alpha 2 will satisfy the uh, given equation because d minus alpha 2 y here if this is 0 and when we operate this d minus alpha 1 on 0. So, the answer will be uh, 0 meaning that equation will be satisfied by the solution. The same exercise we can repeat now for once we take uh, for instance here d minus alpha 2 first and then d minus alpha 1 if we operate on this y is equal to 0, then what will happen that a solution now of this above equation will be also uh, the solution of this equation d minus alpha 1 y is equal to 0 the same idea what we have uh, applied above. So, here now if we solve this d minus alpha 1 y is equal to 0, we will get this y is equal to e power alpha 1 x and now e power alpha 1 x and this e power alpha 2 x. So, we have two solutions now of the given this differential equation of this given differential equation. We have two solution the one is uh, y is equal to e power alpha 2 x another one is y is equal to e power alpha 1 x and these two solutions are linearly independent solutions. What we also know once we have two linearly independent solutions then this uh, linear combination. So, alpha 1 e power uh, or sorry c 1 e power alpha 1 x and plus the another constant times e power alpha 2 x that will also satisfy this given differential equation. And in this case what we have now thus the general solution we can write down because the our equation was the second order linear differential equation we have two linearly independent solutions and if we write down this c 1 e power alpha 1 x c 2 e power alpha 2 x that will be the general solution of the given second order differential equation. So, what we have learned if we have a second order linear equation here we can find out the roots of the auxiliary equation. We can find the roots of this equation which was uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 here it is written already in the factor form and then the solution will be c 1 e power alpha 1 x plus c 2 e power alpha 2 x, but this was the case when we have two distinct roots because in that case only these two solutions e power alpha 2 x and e power alpha 1 x these are linearly independent solutions once we have that this alpha 1 and alpha 2 are distinct. If alpha 1 and alpha 2 are the same value it is a repeated root then we are not forming these two linearly independent solutions in this way. So, there should be another way to compute uh, the general solution when we have alpha 1 and alpha 2 uh, the same number or we have the repeated roots. So, first getting back to the distinct roots. So, when we have distinct roots we can also generalize this 
So, if we have nth order uh, differential equation and if this alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha n are the distinct roots of uh, this uh, so called the auxiliary equation which is coming exactly from this equation replacing the operator d by m. So, if we have these n distinct roots of this equation we can write down uh, the solution as uh, I mean these are the n linearly independent solution e power alpha 1 x e power alpha 2 x and so on e power alpha n x. These are the n different independent solutions of the given differential equation and then when we write down as uh, the linear combination of these solutions meaning y is equal to c 1 e power alpha 1 x c 2 e power alpha 2 x. Uh, and so on. So, this will be the solution will be the general solution of the given differential equation a uh, given uh, homogeneous uh, equation here. So, that is the generalization when we have the distinct roots. Next we will discuss the case of the repeated roots that what will happen if we have the repeated roots and again we will consider here the case of the second order differential equation. So, in case of the second order differential equation we can write down then we can factorize uh, that differential part here with d minus alpha d minus alpha because we have considered now the same roots here alpha. And now what we will use the trick here so the d minus alpha y we will treat as z d minus alpha y as z and now this given equation here by taking this as, as uh, z here. So, we have this given equation. Uh, we can write down at d minus alpha operator on z is equal to 0 and this we can solve first for z once we have z then we can solve for y. So, in that way we will get the solution y of the given differential equation. So, here uh, z is equal to c 1 e power alpha x that will be the solution of this uh, first order differential equation uh, the constant time c 1 alpha x. Now, solving the uh, equation here d minus alpha y is equal to z. So, d minus alpha y is equal to z, z is now c 1 e power alpha x. So, now we need to solve this equation because finally, we want to get this y. This is a linear equation. So, here we have the differential of y. So, this d of y is a d y over d x minus this alpha times y is equal to the c 1 e power alpha x. So, this is linear equation in y and the integrating factor which uh, we get here is the e power minus this alpha times x. So, the solution of this differential equation here will be because it is a linear equation we have already discussed in the last lecture. So, y into this integrating factor e power alpha x the right hand side here over the integral c 1 e power alpha x multiplied by the integrating factor which is here e power minus alpha x and this d x plus c 2. So, uh, this will be the solution here for this given differential equation this linear differential equation. So, e power alpha x will cancel out with this e power minus alpha x and we have c 1 when we integrate we will get x there. So, y is equal to c 1 x plus c 2 uh, times this e power alpha x and the generalization of this we can also get when uh, suppose we have this alpha as a repeated r times say so the alpha root is repeated r times when we have a general n and nth order equation. So, we will get n uh, roots. So, some of them may be repeated. So, here we assume that we have this alpha root r times repeated. So, here this for example, in the second order equation we have discussed this alpha was repeated two times. So, what we get here when alpha was repeated two times we got this factor e power alpha x like the earlier distinct case also we were getting e power alpha 1 x e power alpha 2 x. So, e power alpha x we got and then these constants the two constants are, are, are given by this relation. So, c 1 x plus c 2. Now, if this uh, root is repeated r times then what will be the solution is exactly will follow from here we will have c 1 x power r minus 1 this was 2 times repeated. So, we got this linear term here if we have r times repeated root we will get r minus 1th uh, 
uh, polynomial here plus c 2 x r minus 2 and so on plus the c r and e power alpha x. So, if alpha is uh, alpha root is repeated r times then we will get the solution in this form. Case of the imaginary root. So, we have discussed already the real roots uh, the real distinct and also uh, real repeated. So, in the case of the imaginary root we have the same idea. So, we assume uh, that alpha plus i beta and this alpha minus i beta is the uh, is the roots here are the roots of the given uh, auxiliary equations. So, or two conjugate roots and then the solution it is exactly followed from the case 1 when we discuss the uh, distinct uh, roots and here these roots are distinct they are not the same root. So, we have written exactly our solution in that form some constant here c 1 and exponential the first root alpha plus i beta x plus c 2 another constant e power alpha minus i beta x. Because the case 1 which we have discussed for the distinct roots we have not assumed them uh, whether they are real distinct or the imaginary uh, distinct roots. So, uh, exactly we can use that idea here to get uh, the solution these two independent solutions that e power alpha plus i beta x and e power uh, alpha minus i beta x to two linearly independent solutions and with these uh, constants there the linear combination will be also the solution or the general solution. But what we do because this is not common to write down in terms of these uh, uh, conjugates or in terms of these imaginary roots what we, we simplify further here. So, e power alpha x and e power alpha x we have the common term in both. So, what we will do now so e power alpha x and this e power alpha x we can take this common and what is there now the c 1 e power i beta x plus the c 2 e power minus i beta times x. And then this exponential with this i beta x or exponential with this minus i beta x we can also expand it in this form that this cos beta x plus this i sin beta x and the for c 2 also we can have this cos beta x plus uh, this i times uh, sin beta x that is the we can expand this e power uh, i beta x here in terms of the cos and sin and here also e power minus i beta x in terms of cos and sin. So, now what we will do here y is equal to e power alpha x the same and here this cos beta x here also we have cos beta x. So, these constants here c 1 and the c 2 bar we have combined it and then with the sin beta x also we have this uh, i terms with the c 1 bar minus this uh, c 2 bar. So, we have now these two new constants c 1 bar plus c 2 bar and also the i times c 1 bar minus uh, c 2 bar and here the y is equal to e power this alpha x and we have now renamed these coefficients here c 1 plus c 2 bar as c 1 and here c 1 minus the c 2 with the i itself. So, the another name we have given as c 2 because these two are the arbitrary constants now. So, we will write down the solution when we have uh, two uh, roots here the conjugate roots as a complex number we will write down the solution of our homogeneous equation as e power alpha x c 1 cos beta x and uh, c 2 sin beta x when our roots are alpha plus minus i beta type. So, this alpha will go to the exponential part here and this beta will be with the cos and the sin term. Next we will consider now the, uh, the generalization of this one that when we have a, uh, like alpha plus i beta alpha minus i beta are the conjugate the imaginary roots and they are repeated uh, r times. In that case what would be the solution? So, uh, these conjugates are repeated r times now. So, again the same idea li like we have discussed for the for the real roots that will be applicable now. So, e power alpha x that will be the, the, the common term here only with that constant term will now get into the polynomial terms. So, p 1 plus p 2 x plus p r x uh, r minus 1 with the cos beta x 
and this q 1, q 2, q x, q r, x power r minus 1 with the sin beta x and all these p s and the q s they are the uh, arbitrary constants now. So, again the idea of this repeated roots uh, or the imaginary roots they exactly follow what we have derived for the distinct roots and the repeated roots in case of the real numbers. So, the complementary function the summary now to summarize everything. So, we have the equation the given uh, differential equation f d y is equal to 0. We need to write first the auxiliary equation that means this f m is equal to 0. We will just replace this t by m and we will have the auxiliary equation and its roots of the auxiliary equation will be given by alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha n. The case 1 when the roots are real and non repeated that is the case 1. So, we have y is equal to c 1 e power alpha 1 x plus c 2 e power alpha 2 x and so on c n e power alpha n x that was the case when the roots are real and they are non repeated because each of the term here e power alpha 1 x e power alpha 2 x e power alpha n x they are the linearly independent solutions of the uh, given homogeneous differential equation and their linear combination will give the general solution of the given differential equation. Second we have considered the roots are real and uh, non repeated say this alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 is equal to alpha. So, this is the repeated root here that first two roots are repeated and the alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha n are non repeated. So, in this case what will be the solution now the general solution will take this form for the repeated root we will have this uh, linear polynomial. So, when the root is repeated two times we will get this linear term here with the constant. So, c 1 plus c 2 x and e power this alpha x and all other are non repeated here. So, c 3 e power alpha 3 and c n e power alpha n x. So, that will be the general solution of the given homogeneous differential equation. The case 3 when roots are complex and non repeated say this alpha plus minus i beta and all others are, are real roots for instance alpha 3, alpha 4 and alpha n. So, these first two roots are the, uh, the complex roots alpha plus i beta and alpha minus i beta. So, in this case what will be the solution the complementary function of the given differential equation. So, here y will be e power this alpha x and the c 1 cos beta x plus c 2 sin beta x and then these are the real uh, non repeated roots. So, we will get these terms as c 3 power alpha 3 x plus the c 4 e power alpha 4 x and this will end to the c n e power alpha n x. The case 4 when the roots are complex and uh, they are repeated. So, in that case let us say the roots are alpha plus minus i beta and again this is repeated as alpha plus minus i beta. So, these are the four roots here and then the root number fifth alpha 5, alpha 6 and so on alpha n are the real non repeated roots. So, for now for this case we have to write down the expression here in terms of the, the linear terms with the c 1 and c 2. So, e power alpha x will remain as it is and instead of the c 1 it will take now c 1 plus c 2 x and here this another constant will be c 3 plus c 4 x. So, the four constants will be introduced here corresponding to these uh, repeated complex roots and then we have corresponding to the non repeated distinct real roots we have these terms here with c 5 e power alpha x uh, plus and so on c n uh, e power alpha n x. So, this is the whole summary. So, we have the real non repeated root that is the case here roots are real, but repeated then we will have this uh, polynomial term with the constants and when we have the complex roots we have exactly c 1 cos beta plus c 2 sin beta terms and when we have the complex and the repeated roots again uh, we have this e power alpha x and then this c 1 and c 2 x will be there at c 3 plus c 4 x term 
will be there as we have in the case of the repeated roots for the real. Okay, so let us go through uh, quickly uh, two examples. So, the first example here we want to find the solution of this second order differential equation. The second order term with y minus 5 times the first order term of y plus the 6 y is equal to 0. So, this is the homogeneous uh, linear differential equations or equation of order 2. So, what as a first step we need to write down this equation in the operator form. So, we have this d square here minus this 5 times this d and then plus this 6 operated on y is equal to 0. So, once we have the operated form uh, operator form of the equation we can easily write down the characteristic equation. So, or the auxiliary equation. So, the auxiliary equation corresponding to this will be just we can replace this d by m. So, we have here m square we have minus 5 m then we have plus 6 here and we want to solve this equation which in this case it is a it is a simple one. So, we have here m square minus 5 m plus 6. So, that means this m square and uh, will be minus 3 m plus minus 2 m and plus 6. So, this minus 5 m we have written as minus 3 m and minus 2 m. So, this will give now m into m minus 3 and minus 2 this m minus 3. So, we will get these factors as m minus 2 and m minus 3 is equal to 0. So, we got the solution here m is equal to 2 and m is equal to 3. So, that is the, the solution the roots of this auxiliary equation as 2 and 3. So, we have distinct roots and in case of the distinct root the general solution is c 1 e power this uh, 2 uh, x and c 2 e power 3 x that will be the general solution of the given differential equation. One can also verify by substituting this into the equation uh, whether this uh, satisfies the given differential equation or not. So, the example 2 we will take this fourth order uh, linear differential equation. So, again the corresponding to this differential equation we can write down uh, in operator form. So, this uh, is d 4 minus 2 d 3 plus 5 this d square minus this 8 d here plus 4 operated on y is equal to 0 and then this auxiliary equation we can just replace this d again uh, by m. So, this is the fourth order auxiliary equation it could be uh, difficult to solve. So, once we solve this the roots are coming as 1 and 1 that is the repeated root here and then we are getting also 2 i and minus 2 i the complex conjugate. So, we need to write down the, the complementary function or the general solution of the given differential equation. So, first this repeated root case. So, remember when we have the real repeated root. So, we will get c 1 plus c 2 x and the exponential of this one and here for complex conjugate we will get in terms of the cos and sin. So, the general solution will be the c 1 plus the c 2 x and this exponential x because of this repeated root here because of this repeated root we are getting these two terms and then for uh, plus minus this 2 i uh, 0 plus minus 2 i that is the another root where we are getting this e power this 0 x. So, alpha times this x and then we will get the c 1 I mean the constant which is c 3 here because c 1 c 2 are already appeared. So, c 3 and then we will get this cos the 2 x plus the c 4 and we will get sin 2 x. So, here e power 0 x is 1. So, we are getting this uh, term only that c 3 cos 2 x and c 4 sin 2 x. So, we have the solution now in this case when uh, the equation was the fourth order equation and uh, we will have these four constants in the general solution. So, coming to the conclusion uh, we have today discussed the solution of the homogeneous linear differential equation of this type f t y is equal to 0. This is just for the operator a differential operator we have denoted by this f t and the complementary function which we call as the solution the general solution of this differential equation we call as complementary function. 
So, the, the crucial part was that first we write down the auxiliary equation and find uh, its roots and the nature of the roots of the auxiliary equation it may be real distinct real repeated complex or complex repeated roots and that is uh, important here for writing the solution and in, in each case we know now how to write the solution of uh, the given homogeneous differential equation. So, in the next lecture what we will uh, learn now how to find a particular solution of the given non homogeneous differential equation and when we add the two we will get basically the general solution of the given non homogeneous differential equation. So, here are the references used for preparing the lectures and uh, thank you for your attention.